Thanks for staying with us. Uh, the topic of discussion this time is that the CJN summons Chief Justice orders a probe of judges. Now, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Kudirat Kekerekun, has initiated a probe to, uh, into the federal and state judges involved in issuing uh, conflicting rulings in political cases in River State. The National Judicial Council panel, led by former Court of Appeal Justice, has been given orders to investigate and provide a report within the week. The judges summoned include those involved in the political dispute between Rivers Governor Siminolai Spubara and former Governor, now FCT Minister, Nyesom Wike. Our guest this morning is Barrister Elvis Asia, legal practitioner. Good morning and welcome to the program, Barrister. Uh, good morning. Thank you for having me on the program. Mm. A lot of people will say, well, it's been long in coming and uh, this probe should be uh, should have come very much earlier. But we find out that it's not even only in River State. We have other states that this has, been ha uh, this has happened as well. But it's a good thing we're starting somewhere. We hope that the dragnet will uh, go as far as other states in the north and the south, west and everywhere. Uh, you're right. I, I, uh, you know, I expected that the judiciary should have taken this a serious, uh, you know, all along, we have had so many cases of uh, conflicting judgment, uh, judgments being moved to the the FCT. Um, you know, even when you cannot have a clear, you don't have clear cases of uh, conflict uh, or safety issues in in the states, uh, and so uh, this is coming at you know uh, when it's, I mean it's good that we are doing it, uh, even though uh, late. Um, the image of the judiciary has been so battered. People do no, no longer trust the judiciary as the last hope of common man, and so something drastic uh, needs to be done uh, to, you know, clean up the system. You can't continue to have conflicting judgments on, on the same issue, and this is happening because whilst you have uh, some judges giving judgments in the state, um, some other judges are giving different judgments outside of the state. And, and then the, the impression out there is that, you know, the highest bidder can purchase judgments. This is not good for uh, the rule of law. It's not good for the administration of justice. This is not good for our democracy. And so uh, the action of the CJ of the CJ and the National Judicial Council at this time is the work of development, and um, it is hoped that this probe uh, would you know extend to all parts of the country where we have had so many cases of very suspicious and uh, and uh, strange conflicting decisions, uh, with res particularly with respect to political cases across the country. But should there even be uh, conflicting cases? Because what does the law say? These cases that we are given conflicting um, judgments are stemming from, sometimes the judgment will come from the Federal High Court in Abuja, and then the other one will come from the uh, High Court in the state where uh, that case emanates from and all that. By law, should any state, any case of this nature, especially like the one that we're talking about, Nanyesom Wike and uh, Sim Fubara, uh, should they be taken to Abuja in the first place or they should stay in the state? Because if they should stay in the state, then we shouldn't even be regarding another judgment as a judgment that is conflicting anyone that comes from the, the court that has the jurisdiction to hear that case. Well, quite frankly, um for example, the Federal High Court has divisions across the country, and there's a division in, in Port Harcourt, in the United States. And so any case that um, borders on the jurisdiction of the Federal High Court uh, should ordinarily go through the division of the Federal High Court in that state or in nearby state, not to Abuja. When you move into Abuja, it's, it's suspicious. It gives the impression that there's somebody out there who thinks that, you know, you know judges within... Uh, judges outside of the state, um, you know, can be can be influenced. In, 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 whether or not they, they were influenced is immaterial because it's a matter of the perception. Mm -hmm. And justice must not only be done; it must be seen to be done. When the people perceive that justice is not done, then it is not done. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the division of the court in the state should be the one to handle the case. Another thing is that you know you have jurisdictional issues. There are cases, very limited cases. That the federal high court can handle there are also very limited cases that the state high the state high court can handle and if you look at the dispute that we have seen from river state in my view 
you know, the jurisdiction uh, should lie with the, the, the High Court of, 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 of River State and not necessarily the Federal High Court. I really don't know why um, some of these cases are going to the Federal High Court. Um, I know that, you know, some cases, pre-election matters, post-election matters and all that can go to the Federal High Court, you know, the pre-election matters can go to the Federal High Court. But can you really call these kind of cases uh, where somebody is asked say that um, some uh, few seats have become vacant and all of that, are these really matters that should go to the, the, the Federal High Court? So I think that is really the issue. You know, what we have seen is that politicians are exploiting um, this jurisdictional question uh, to, their, to, 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 to what will sue them. So when they feel that they can use the Federal High Court to get the kind of judgment they want to get, they will, they will do the Federal High Court. When they feel that it's the state, because you know that the, the governors have a lot of influence within the states, and then they also, you know, do that. And this is not really good. We want to see a situation where, you know, if you have a case, um, you know, that bothers on a matter that comes from a particular state, that should be within the purview of the High Court of that state. And the High Court of that state should be able to resolve it rather than going to the Federal High Court. And then when you need to go to the Federal High Court, then the Federal High Court division in that state should be the one to handle it. This idea, this administrative system where you allocate cases to to uh, um, uh, to over, in that arises from from a particular state uh, to be heard by another division raises suspicion, and, and that is really what the issue is. So um, it, you know, it is hoped that this move uh, that is being made now uh, would correct uh, these anomalies. Okay, um, so this panel has been uh, set up, and they are uh, they are supposed to. Turn out, uh, turn in the report within the week. What are the things you're hoping that they are going to do, and what is the outcome you're hoping to see after this panel report? I think the first thing they would do is to see why um, these cases, um, for example, were heard outside of you know uh, Port Harcourt. Now, the chief judge of the, of the federal High court has discretion to. You know, uh, allocate matters in such a way. For example, when he, you feel that in a particular, the particular division there's there's no safety and all that, it's possible for you to actually move it to another division. But it, there has to be some basis for it. You know, the Federal High Court in uh, uh, Harcourt, you know, is still sitting as, as, as we speak. It's going to be closed up. And so, you know, they I don't know whether there's any justifiable basis for moving the case. So that's one of the issues that they will need to really uh, look at. And then we also they need to also look at these conflicting judgments. How come on the same issue you have a judge delivering a judgment on one issue, another judge delivering another, 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 another judgment on another issue? Another thing that we look at is the, the rather strange use of ex party orders, the rather strange use of interim orders um, in the political space where the other party is not aware of the matter and then you get, uh, you give them an advantage. You know, I have seen ex party orders that pretty much determines even the substance of the case. Should be having situations like that, so that you know is another issue that I believe that they will have to consider. And my 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 hope, uh, my hope is that in the final analysis, uh, the report will demonstrate, um, you know, uh, put out all of these anomalies and recommend recommend sanctions. Because you know, one of the things that we one of the problems we have in, we have in this country is that you know people get away with everything. They have no sanctions. You know, there's no punishment for bad behavior. If anybody is found to have done something wrong, whether it's the chief or the federal high court in, in the administrative way the, this matter were allocated, uh, there should be sanction. There should be sanction in accordance with the relevant laws, you know, that guides the, the judiciary. So we are, that's what I want to expect. I don't want, I don't want a situation whereby you just make a report, some uh, theoretical report, and then you begin to debate the report. So the, 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 there should be recommendation of sanctions to be meted out to those who are found to have done anything wrong in the post in, in, in all of this and that those sanctions should be carried out by the national judicial council in in, in under the laws and uh, regulations that guides its operation so that's really what i want to see um in this process uh, but when you when you talk about sanctions uh, to what extent can these sanctions go uh, will these licenses be withdrawn will they be sacked will they what kind of sanctions are you hoping to see to serve as deterrent to others who might be giving these uh, unnecessary ex parte uh, injunctions and all the things that we have talked about well it's difficult to say exactly um the, the kind of sanction that is expected uh, because the sanction that will be meted out will be determined by 
what the, what the findings uh, it, what the findings are in terms of what was actually wrong, and so but you know from experience there's the, the, you could be warned for example, you could be suspended for a period, and we have seen instances where uh, recommendations have been made for those uh, judicial officers uh, to be to be to be to be dismissed from service, and and that can if it is established that they have betrayed their oath that they have betrayed you know the the the, the, the ethics of, of the perfection in, in you know so I, that's what we want to expect to see it is very difficult to say exactly what i mean we haven't seen the report we haven't seen whether or not any wrong was done so uh, the wrong that is done you know it will not determine uh, the kind of punishment or the kind of sanction that will be recommended uh, for you know uh, judicial officers but you know, it is expected that if any wrong is established in the court of this, uh, there should be serious sanctions to dissuade and discourage other people from continuing to issue orders in this manner. I, I, I give uh, you know, uh, apart from beyond political matters, there is a case that we are involved in right now that a judge gave an uh, in an ex parte order, you know, made an order without even looking at the papers because if you had looked at the papers, you'd have seen that you know it was very wrong. So you see, these are the things that we don't want to see in the judiciary. And these are the things that gives an impression to the members of the, of the public that they cannot get justice from the court. And they are resort to self-help using the police, using security agencies, using all sorts of, you know, uh, manner to try to uh, get, get justice for themselves. We don't, want to, we don't want to have that. We want a system that works, you know, a system that is based on the rule of law. And the only way you can do that is for sanctions to be met. Uh, the nature and form of the sanction is something that I cannot really say Exactly, because I'm sure there are rules and regulations and guys national judicial council in, in, in things like this. So when the report comes in and we see the infractions that are detected, then the appropriate sanctions uh, will be met. Okay, uh, just finally and very briefly, uh, what marks out the, uh, the reverse case uh, from every other case where uh, these kind of things have happened? Because, for instance, uh, we have a case in Kano State Emirate where conflicting uh, judgments are also given, so we are having the emirate uh, severed into two or more and all that. So uh, what marks out the one of rivers, or are you just thinking that maybe after the rivers, others would be addressed as well, because no mention was made of the fact that these other ones could also be addressed. It's as if only rivers is the one well, that is interesting enough uh, to have a mention at this point. Well, I wouldn't say uh, only reverse is interesting enough. I think the new CGN has demonstrated that uh, she's committed to, you know, ensuring that the rules are enforced, and she's committed to ensuring that judges uh, play by the rules. And so I think this is, I mean, she was just uh, sworn in uh, a few weeks ago. So I think this is the first first uh, test case for for for, okay. for the chief justice to demo, to leave to the to to. And the promises that she has made. So, um, I, and I, I want to believe that to be extended to others. Um, and yeah, I'm also sure that the reason why reverse is very important right now is that that is this is the current uh, situation that is really uh, that's captured the attention of you know members of the public. And uh, from the report, there are so many petitions that have arisen from this. Okay. And I want to believe that this is, this is why the CJN is taking up this. But uh, you know, from from. From our body language, it is, it is, uh, it is clear that others will, will follow. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we thank God for the new CGN, and uh, we hope that uh, as she has begun, she will continue in that light and make sure sanity returns to the judiciary and people will start having more faith in the judiciary, which is supposed to be uh, the last hope of the common man. We'd like to thank you, Barista Elvis Asia, for coming on the program and sharing your thoughts with us. It's, it's, it's always great to be here. Pastor Elvis Asia is a legal practitioner here in Lagos, and he was looking at uh, the uh, panel that has been set by the CJN to look into the affairs of River State as regards the uh, the conflicting judgments that has brought the uh, or that have brought the uh, state into the condition they find themselves right now. We'll take a short break, and when we return, NLC slams IMF for fuel subsidy removal denial. Uh, that is our next hot topic. Stay with us.